Today, I'm gonna to show you my least favorite exercises for push. All right, everyone, a new series I'm gonna start for you guys. And these are my least favorite exercises per body part. And we're gonna start here with push. So, I have two for chest, one for shoulder, and then I have one for triceps I'm gonna show you all today. So, let's start out with this chest. And it's, to me, how you kick off every push workout. Now, when I was young in my bodybuilding career, everyone said you gotta do low cable crossovers. So guess what? I did a shitload of pressing and I did every form of cable crossovers you could dream of. And guess what? All that did for my chest was make it even more shit than it already was. It cranks on my biceps, it cranks on my front delt, it gives me very little development in my chest. So let me show you why I hate it. All right, so if you look here, I'm already like feeling not stable, but instead of my chest having load, I feel like I'm stretching my bicep because as you see me doing this channel, right? Step away curls. Guess what that is right there? That's a maximum stretch for my biceps. So already I'm starting in a hole or a deficit of my biceps being fully lengthened, meaning they want to activate. So I have to literally squeeze my biceps to get this motion to happen, okay? Now, I'm gonna drop one of these handles so I can show you on my chest. Now, can I fully get my chest short? Yes, but also my front delt right now is rock fucking hard. Here, right there, to get that low cable crossover, my bicep is tight, my front delt is tight, my pecs are also, but, to me, why would I want to be in what I would consider an unstable position of it pulling me this way, my biceps fully under load, and then at the top of the contraction, my front delt being under load, why wouldn't I just want to simply raise it up and do high cable crossovers where I have more leverage? Because if you look at my body positioning, right, this is much more natural and athletic to be able to get that into place. So I prefer the high cable crossover, or if you've seen in the last chest workout we just filmed, the roller, fly is going to be a much better option or if you don't want to have that fancy setup you can always do a pec deck fly so again two other or really three other options we can really use to hit those pecs much much better than this low cable crossover and something else is interesting right so i had 40 pounds in that waist stack and that felt pretty challenging for me for a couple reps now when i do high cable crossovers i can minimally do 120 for 15 reps so do that math in your head guys that discrepancy is a third of the weight how are you gonna say that's gonna grow my pecs when I can use more and get a better contraction and take my biceps in front down out of it? If low cable crossovers was 1A that I hate, this is 1B. Now, if you look at my torso position, guess what I'm gonna do? Sideways chest press. This is what I say to everyone else who do this. <laughs> Fuck, I, I literally hate this. So I'm gonna show you some things here, guys. Look, right here, and they're like, oh man, I can really feel that. Oh, it's killing my chest. Guess what? You wanna know how you stretch the pec? Watch this. Now my pec is stretched. This, I'm completely removing the stretch portion of this exercise. So I'm already cutting it in half in terms of effectiveness. Then, here, now, you see me do a fucking video of this with four plates. If I was doing this sideways chest press, I might have a plate and a quarter on it. Again, just like with the low cable crossover, do the math. Four plates versus one and a quarter. What do you think is gonna put more tissue in my chest? And then, oh, by the way, with this sideways chest press, I'm literally cutting the exercise in half and only doing the top half. Now, I know what you're gonna say next, right? Oh, well, Chris, I really feel this in my chest. It gives me a huge pump. You know what also gives me a huge pump? Watch this. If I did 100 of these, my chest is already getting fucked up right now. I'm feeling it, boom. I'm getting, literally my pump is growing. Is this growing tissue? Zero, none. Okay, I'm gonna try to stop the ranting here because that really gets me fired up, right? Because I see all these young kids following all these Instagram influencers who have giant chests. Guess what? They didn't grow that motherfucker on this. They grew it in all of this, right? Incline, flat, dumbbells. That's how they put on the tissue, right? And then as you see me posting this channel, right? Five plates on that piece, four plates on this piece. It's just a matter of math, guys. <laughs> just a matter of math. So if you're doing those two exercises, I just beg you to stop. They aren't effective, they don't work, trash them. You had to know if you've been a long time follower of this channel that I was gonna choose a press, right? But right now, before I start, you wanna guess what it is? It's a famous bodybuilder. Even though we all love Arnold, this exercise is complete fucking garbage. Here to there. Here to there. I can't even do them right. This doesn't even feel coordinated. And I have 20 pounds here. If I was gonna do shoulder presses for weight, I'd have at least 120 pounds on each arm, okay? So I'm gonna drop these load. Now, I wanna show you, a, I'm gonna teach you a little physics, right? And I'm not a super smart dude, but I understand physics and gravity, right? 
gravity works here to here, right? North to south, because it pulls down. Does gravity work here? Does it work this way? Does it work east to west? Absolutely fucking not. It just doesn't. <laughs> it's very similar to where, you ever seen people do south laterals and like this, and they hold the dumbbells here? Or they hold them here and they just raise their arms? The dumbbells aren't moving north and south. The shoulder is getting no work. You're taking your elbow through space, north and south, the weights aren't moving north and south. That's why the side lateral works when the weight's away from your body. It's moving up and then down. That's how gravity works, north and south. That's why when you lift free weights with dumbbells or barbells, it has to go up and down for it to be heavy and work muscle tissue. So with the Arnold press, I know what you're gonna say, right? It's an iso hold, Chris, from right here. Okay, if you wanna do an iso hold, ready? Are you ready? Here, one, two, three, one, Two, three. Now, is that too logical? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like all these things are logical, but maybe they aren't. Because I see people doing these in the gym all the time. So, what I want you to think about, guys, is choose exercise that makes sense biomechanically, right? This is doing nothing but shearing my shoulders in wasted motion, and it, and it literally makes me deload the weight that I'm able to use, right? So, if I, if I legit did Arnold presses for you guys, I might be able to do 70s. But as I said, if I could use the 120s on a normal shoulder press of going here, 50 more pounds in each arm, guess which one's gonna put more muscle tissue on me? And much, at a much faster rate. <laughs> Again, this, is, this to me is just simple physics. More weight, more time under tension, and less wasted movement. That's how we grow. Now, final piece of push is gonna be triceps. So, you all know that I love cables for triceps, you know that I love dips for triceps, and skull crushers, and close grip bench press, right? But what is one of the things I made a video on early in this channel history, but I see it done still so many times and I just want to go shake them. Single arm dumbbell kickbacks. Hands down my least favorite tricep exercise of all time. So let me show you why I hate it. All right, so how this setup normally is done is most people brace their non-working arm on this flat bench. They grab the dumbbell and they go here. They go here, right? Now, this to here is nothing. I'm literally not working shit, right? So already a third of this motion is garbage. To drive up, if you really hold that contraction, it works great, but here's how most people do it. They just sling it, it's a rock. Now, you know those things that used to be in office buildings where all the balls are in the middle and the ball goes here and here, and it literally can go for hours with no one touching it? God, I didn't think I was gonna get this sciencey today, but fuck me, I, maybe I have to. So. If you're using momentum to lift weights, it's not gonna freaking work. It's just not. Momentum does nothing for the muscle and does everything for your ego. It makes you feel good because you're using a lot of weight. But that's why you see guys with, that have a big squat, it's a loose term, but shitty legs, right? Because they don't get a lot of knee flexion, they get a lot of lower back into it, they get a lot of ass into it. So, just like with this kickback, watch this again. Let me, just, just watch me. Does this look effective to you guys? I can talk to you and not strain. Literally, I'm doing jack shit. Okay? Now, let me show you how to make this effective. Chaz and I made a cool video. We'll tag above. Grab two dumbbells. Instead of a neutral grip, print any grip, thumbless. Now, if you look, I'm not getting here with it, right? This is, again, not doing shit. I'm here. Now, I want to ram these things up. Boom, one, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now, I did three reps. Did you hear the difference in my voice? That's straining. That means the muscle is working. <laughs> That's how, if you want to take that kickback and make that goes from a useless one arm exercise to a highly effective two arm exercise, specifically for that medial uh, tricep head, but it still works a long head really, really well. So, there you have it, guys. My three, technically four. <laughs> least favorite push exercises. If you're doing them now, I would highly recommend you throw them in the trash, pick new ones, and start getting brutally strong on them. Until next time, like, share, and subscribe. Chris TV.